Got a fun haircut plan for you guys today. We're gonna work on a short haircut focused on uh, combining those shapes that we talk about, open, closed, and balanced. Um, so we're gonna work our way through that. Um, and we could do the combo of shapes all different ways in all the different sections, and it would be a different haircut every time. So that's really, uh, when it gets down to it, exactly what I wanna get through to you guys today is being able to see a haircut, associate it with those shapes, and then execute it from there. So the sectioning for this cut, I'm gonna use a white comb today because we got dark hair. We're gonna comb this straight back. I'm gonna part it in the center just for sectioning sake, but she's going to wear this kind of wherever she wants. So we'll comb this back. Right over the nose, straight back to the crown. Part that. You guys know that I keep sectioning pretty basic because it doesn't need to be complicated. As long as it has a purpose. So we split left and right. Now we're gonna split front and back. So we go high crown down to behind the ear. Splitting it, follow that hairline right here all the way up to that high crown. We're gonna do the same thing on the opposite side here. All these are the same densities together. So you got the back is the same density from here all the way around. And then you have the front is the same density from here. So we got this much hair all the way to the front, right? So we know what we're working with. Now what I wanna do to just finalize this is separate the top and bottom. So I'm gonna go right along the parietal ridge. And now we'll take away that center part because we don't need it anyways. So I'll comb this side up and then I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. All right, we've got this top section. It's not balanced yet. So I'm gonna comb it straight up so I can really look at it. I see it's a little further over over here. So I'll just take a little bit more. Now the goal or what we gotta figure out is what shapes are we gonna put in each place? We could go balanced in the back, closed on the sides. Balanced would look like this, right? And everything shape-wise happens from the top view down. That's why I love the top angle because the top view down shows the shape of the haircut. The front view shows the elevation of the haircut. Is it layered? Is it graduated? Is it one length? That's how you look at it, right? But let's take the, the back in the day, how they taught it um, is circle. So a round shape would be following the round of the head. This is all horizontal, right? This isn't up and down. This is horizontally around the head. So you see that circle, right? Just like that. Now we change it up. Now we have a square shape. So everything stays balanced. So when you think about how you would hold everything, let me grab a different color comb. When you're here on the head, I pull this out and I cut everything in this square line and it's gonna go like this. Because I'm on a round shape, this hair is, doesn't take as long to get to my comb as this hair in the corner does. So when this hair in the corner comes to my comb, you got that, and this hair here comes to my comb, look how much further that hair in the corner, this hair here, takes to get to it, about another inch. So what's gonna happen when I cut this in a straight line, a square line in the back? It's going to fall a little bit longer because of the round of the head, the head starting to push away, right? So when I say balanced, because I think square confuses people, um, and triangle and circle, to me, it was a little bit confusing because when you say I'm gonna cut a triangular haircut, some people think it's like, it's from the front view. Some people are taught in school that round is this. And that's fine. That doesn't make it wrong. What I'm saying isn't right either, right? Because this is round if you follow the round of the head this way. It is. Some people think a square haircut would look like this. It's a box sitting on the head. But that's not what I'm talking about. I wanna talk about the flow of the weight horizontally in a haircut. I call it balanced because we're cutting a line that just stays balanced in the back. If I cut a closed line, it's gonna go more towards the face. 
it's gonna close off the face with the weight. We're pushing all that weight to the front of the head. If I cut an open shape on the head, I wanna pull the hair off of the face and open the face up, right? So those are the three things that I'm focused on. So in the back here, if I cut a balanced shape short on the back, I'm still gonna get a little weight in the corner. So if I go open, I cut a round shape, and now every single piece of that hair is coming around and touching the comb at the same length. So now we don't have weight. When I get to the next section, so we're about to go into the next section, and now I can shift that from being not open anymore to then closing it off, right? And if I close it off, I push a little length and weight towards the front. But I've held on to the same length all the way around the head so I don't get too much weight. And then all of a sudden, I cut it so it gets a little bit longer. Or I cut an open haircut around the head. Everything's open. I'm following the head shape. And then I decide I want to balance it off. So this will all come out. This will be the shortest point because we're on a round surface right here in the center. And then this will be a little bit longer. So we'll get a little extra length in the front, but it won't look extreme John and Kate plus eight-ish style, right? Does that make sense? So we got decisions to make. For me, I'm going to cut a balanced shape here. It's going to work into an open shape around the back. And then we're going to cut a closed shape on top, combo of shapes. But I want to show you guys how to combine these shapes together. The way that I like to focus on shape, especially on short hair, uh, let's just say majority of the time on short hair, is cut my first line horizontal. Because this will get me at the length that I want. It'll also give me a guideline for every section that I take. So if I come here, hold this hair out, I want to go light on the tension. One thing you got to really focus in on here is the elevation, right? So if I'm here, I'm building a weight line. If I'm here, I'm not building a weight line. So we've talked a lot about the horizontal shape. But we haven't talked about our up and down, our vertical. And vertical is gonna play a pretty big role in where that weight sits. It starts to build out from the haircut. So right here, my elevation, I'm going to go at 90 degrees out from the head shape here. I want to make sure I'm standing parallel to the head, shoulders parallel to the head, and I cut my line with the right elevation, and I choose my length, and I start to cut. You can already visually see that this part here is shorter than this part here because look at the curve. We're working on a curve. So here, recomb. And notice I'm combing underneath and pulling up because that ensures that my intent is to pull the hair to the sky and not combing it down. Then my intent is to push it to the floor, right? So I want to make sure everything I'm doing has a purpose. There's my line. Lost a little bit of tension there towards the back end, so I'm gonna just cut. <laughs> but you can see visually right here, the length. I cut balanced, but it got longer because I cut balanced. If I cut closed, this would be even more extreme. Now, I've chosen my length for the sides, and I'm gonna start in the front and I'm gonna work my way towards the back vertically. Now my section has a slight, I'm gonna clip this away just to make it easier for myself. My section has a slight diagonal back feel to it. So we're here, come underneath, and go to the top of that section, and this is where I'm gonna cut. Now I'm going to bring the previous section halfway. This is really important. You don't want to bring that previous section 
all the way to the next one, you want to bring it halfway to it. And don't take too much new hair. Bring it halfway to it, meet them in the middle. That way it's still, it's not really changing too many lengths. Because if you bring the previous section as your guide to all the way to the new section, now the new section is way shorter than your guide. And then the next section will be shorter than that section. So you'll start to continue to build a shorter. By the time you get here, you've kind of almost cut a closed shape because it got a little bit longer towards the towards the front. And we are working our way towards the back here, towards the back section. So we're here. I'm gonna go one, and then we'll go probably two. That'll put us right behind the ear. And then we'll go into cutting our round for open shape. So I'm initially combing this into my hand by pulling it this way, but then my last comb is back. And once we have the side cut, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little scissor over comb just to cross check any inconsistencies in that shape. Okay. So there's the side. Now we shift from vertical to slightly diagonal back. And we're going to follow the round of the head all the way through, cutting everything the same length about it. Now, I want my elevation to shift and change a little bit throughout the back of this haircut. I don't want all of this back to be the same length. That would get us the John and Kate plus eight haircut, spiky in the back here. I want this to have a nice soft lie to it. Now, we've done this before in our last short haircut session um, where we create the triangle in the back here and, and that we just cut a little bit different. I'm not gonna do that in this one because I wanna really challenge myself and you guys not always have to put that triangle there, but just have the awareness of the crown of the head, right? So I'll go against the head, against the head, all the way here. But as I'm up here, I'm gonna drop and still continue to go against the head. I have this section, but it's gonna be cut here, drop. Because wherever you want the weight line to sit is where your fingers should kind of stop elevating. Some saturation on the hair here. Now we are going to work diagonal back through the hairline. This hair I'm going to comb over, get it out of the way. I'm using the tight teeth of the comb because that will help keep everything together and cleaner. Look at my finger angle. It's not change, it's not going up the head shape. So this finger angle isn't like this. I'm leaving that corner, that's that weight. So now, to take these sections, I comb everything in the direction I'm gonna part it, because that'll give me an easy line to follow with the top of the comb. So then I take the tip of the comb here at my starting point, follow it with my thumb, and your thumb kind of presses into the other hair, the hair that you're not, that you're splitting, and allows it to be separate. So comb it in the direction, follow your thumb through, and then comb everything over, get it separated, and then come through here this stuff over, switch to the fine teeth. It'll keep it a little tighter. The cutting lotion helps keep this clean, and now you're good to go. Here, keeping that finger angle we talked about, building that weight in the top end. You'll see my fingers are pointed towards the sky on that top section not coming over. So here, see that? Now shift. Your finger angle's gotta be up. It gets harder and harder 
as you're working through the top here because you're moving away from the head shape. It's easy to follow the head shape because you kind of know your angle. Once you start pulling away from that, you start to have to rely on your visual and your eye. There we go. Up. Comb it over, but last comb has to be towards me. Keep that weight moving. Through. And then here's our buildup right there. So even though I changed my body position, I'm still pulling the hair, the new or the old hair to the new section. So still taking the same partings, scooping up my section, still going straight up to the ceiling. It's just what makes you the most comfortable because when you're comfortable cutting hair, you're more consistent. When you're uncomfortable, that's when the inconsistencies come in. I'm actually going to leave it now that we're over here because I want to cut all this diagonal back. So I'm going to move into this side and do my cutting the same. So cut my balanced shape here. Another reason why these two sides need to be as balanced as possible with a square section so that you're working with the same lengths. So what I'll do here is I can actually, there's a couple ways you can do it. You could measure it if you wanted to, like I can see right here, good benefit of the YS Park comb is you can kind of count these little marks here. So I could go here and cut myself a piece. And the, the number one thing here would be if you're gonna do this and lay it on the head like this, is to not have really too much tension in it. But I can come here and literally cut that piece and then check it here and then come over here, grab just a little bit and cut my length across the top. Now that I'm here, I take my slight diagonal back section. I've got this all in my hands. Pull it away from the face and I come in and cut. The first comb is to get it kind of away from all this hair, the long hair. So we comb it away and then scoop it up to cut. So now we're going to go into where I cut on top of my fingers, right? So I pull with that guide there. We're cutting straight up towards the ceiling. So the crown straight up and down. I know I got a dark shirt on. Watch my fingers. I know you can't see the hair. Look at my fingers. So really loving all the texture in this. I'm going to texturize the, the I almost said I'm going to texturize it a lot on the top here. So now we've created balanced sides, open back, closed top, combining all three shapes. So we've got the top. I'm going to take, uh, we'll call it horizontal sections across the top. So one, two, three, four. All of those are going to come uh, back to, it's going to go two to one, three to two, four to two. That's how we're going to do the front. We're going fingers parallel to the floor. Section one. Notice I'm using point cutting because I really want that texture. Pop. Otherwise, I'm going to cut it blunt and then I'm going to spend a ton of time texturizing. So horizontal across. Back. So two, section two goes to one for a slight over direction. I got to recomb at this point. And the reason I have to recomb is I lose so much tension right here in my fingers. So if I didn't, watch this, if I don't recomb and I cut this, this is why you don't cut past your second knuckle. This is going to be a very good visual. Ready? When I comb this, look at the length here compared to here. Your tension, hair gets scrunched, the round of the head, all that plays into it, and now all of a sudden this side's way longer than the other side. So you have to recomb it, come up, 
have grip with that second knuckle and cut. Section three, back to section two. So we're not going all the way to one because I don't want that much over direction. Don't want that much length in the front. Now section four is gonna come all the way back to section two. So we're skipping a step to give us just a little extra length in the front. It's me, it's just me. So once I get this spare axe in there, then I can really start like figuring out what I want this cut to start calming it down. And see, even if you did that top, like this little top area here, when we over-directed it all the way back, when we over-directed four all the way to, to two, um, that gave us this major amount of length. If we went four back to three, it would be a little shorter in the front. So kind of gives you that option. But what do we think? Very cool. So hope you guys enjoyed the class. I really appreciate all of you guys being a part of the group, being a part of the club. Um, if you guys have questions about anything, please write them in the app. Also, you know, little tips and things like that. But if you have questions, again, I wanna be your cutting coach. Um, we're doing the live classes one day a week, but my goal is to now free up a little bit of my time to put out more YouTube videos, um, but you'll get them before you'll get the alerts on the app. Part of the Facebook club, you're on the Facebook group. If you're part of Patreon, you're on the Patreon app. It's the exact same thing, it's just on two different platforms. That's it guys, enjoy your week. I hope you took a lot from this class. Uh, implement it, I wanna hear your successes. Other than that, I will see you guys soon on the next video, on the next live, whatever it is. Uh, thank you guys, I appreciate all of you.